3.5 in your textbook. This section deals with equations that have absolute values in them. First, let's remember that an absolute value is a way of expressing how far a particular number is from zero on the number line. Sometimes it's helpful to think of absolute value as simply being the magnitude part of a number, that is, don't worry whether it's positive or negative, just look at the number part, and that is a useful way to think of it. But it's also going to be important that we understand that absolute value is about measuring distance from zero on the number line. If you look at the number line below, you'll see one demonstration that the absolute value of 3 is 3. Those little brackets show you that the number 3 is 3 steps away from 0 on the number line. The other brackets show you that the number negative 3 is also 3 steps away from 0 on the number line. It just happens to be 3 steps in the other direction. When we're working with absolute values in equations, we need to think to ourselves what values of x will make a statement true. So for example, here's a statement, the absolute value of x is 5. What numbers could x be? Well, there's two different numbers that we could plug in in this equation for x that would make it true. One is we could set x equal to 5, and the other is we could set x equal to negative 5. Because when we take the absolute value of either 5 or negative 5, the answer we get is just plain old 5. So here's a little bit harder question. What numbers could we plug in to make this statement true? The absolute value of x plus 3 equals 5. A helpful way to think about this is that we need for the stuff inside those absolute value bars, that x plus 3, we need that chunk inside there to either be equal to 5, because then our equation would be the absolute value of 5 equals 5, or we need the stuff inside those absolute value bars to be equal to negative 5, because then our equation would be the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So there's really two ways that we can make this statement true. We can make the stuff inside x plus 3 be equal to 5, or we could make the stuff inside x plus 3 be equal to negative 5. Before we do anything to the terms inside those absolute value bars, we have to get rid of them. We can't really do mathematical operations across the absolute value bars line. Although we can distribute across them, we have to be really careful with what happens in our signs. So what's easiest to do is to rewrite the absolute value statement above as two separate equations because there's two separate ways that that absolute value equation could be true. The first is that x plus 3 could be 5. That's simply saying the stuff inside the absolute value bars could be equal to 5. The other is that we could say x plus 3 has to be negative 5. That's just a way of saying the stuff inside the absolute value bars could also equal negative 5, and the equation would be true. Now we have these two separate equations, x plus 3 equals 5 and x plus 3 equals negative 5. There's no absolute value bars in either one of them, and so we can do our balanced operations in order to find out what values of x make these two equations true. To have x plus 3 be equal to 5, x would have to be 2. To make x plus 3 equal to negative 5, x would have to be negative 8. So these two values, x equals 2 and x equals negative 8, are solutions to the original absolute value equation up above. Let's look at a little bit more complicated example now. Here we have the equation 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5, all of that minus 11 equals 4. Before we do anything else, we're going to need to figure out how to get rid of those absolute value bars. The first thing we need to do is to isolate the absolute value chunk of this equation. So we want to get that absolute value chunk all by itself. To do that, I'm first going to add 11 to both sides of the equation. Notice I'm not adding or subtracting anything to the inside of the absolute value bars. I'm simply working with stuff that's outside of them right now. When I do that, I get 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 15. 
and I divide both sides of the equation by 3 to get 2x plus 5 and take the absolute value of that equals 5. Notice that now what I have on the left hand side is the absolute value chunk. It's just the absolute value of some stuff equals a number. That's step one, is to isolate that absolute value chunk. Next, we need to look at that equation that has an absolute value chunk in it and identify what different ways it could be true. So we have this equation, the absolute value of 2x plus 5 equals 5. There are two different ways that this could be true. Either the stuff inside the absolute value bars could be equal to 5, or the stuff inside the absolute value bars could be equal to negative 5, because when we take the absolute value of negative 5, we get 5. So these are the two ways that we could make this equation true. Now we're going to go back and look at what was the stuff inside the absolute value bars there. Remember that the stuff inside the absolute value bars was the expression 2x plus 5. So look on the left side first. Either 2x plus 5 has to be equal to 5, and we can solve that expression. We'll subtract 5 from both sides. We'll get 2x equals 0, so x must be 0. Or, now we'll look at the right side. The stuff inside the absolute value bars, the 2x plus 5, could be equal to negative 5. So 2x plus 5 could equal negative 5. Again, we'll solve this expression. We'll subtract 5 from both sides. We get 2x equals negative 10. We'll divide both sides by 2 and get x equals negative 5. So it looks like the two solutions to our original inequality were x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. Let's check these both to see how they make the original equation true. Here's our original equation. 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 5 minus 11 equals 4. First, let's plug in 0 for x in this expression and see how it works. So here's our original expression with 0 substituted for x. As we simplify this step by step, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 5 inside the absolute value bars is simply 5. Notice that we made the stuff inside the absolute value bars equal to 5. Remember, as we were going through and solving this equation, that was one of the things we were aiming for, was making the stuff inside the absolute value bars equal to 5. Now if we continue on, 3 times the absolute value of 5, well that's just 3 times 5, which is 15, and 15 minus 11 is indeed 4. So we see that 0 makes this original equation true. Now let's try x equals negative 5, the other solution. Again, here's our original equation with negative 5 written in place of x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And inside the absolute value bars, negative 10 plus 5 gives you negative 5. Now we have 3 times the absolute value of negative 5 minus 11 equals 4. Again, notice the stuff inside the absolute value bars ended up being negative 5. That was the other part of the solution that we were working for on the previous slide. 3 times the absolute value of negative 5. Well, the absolute value of negative 5 is just 5. 3 times 5 is 15, and 15 minus 11 is 4. So you'll see that both x equals 0 and x equals negative 5 are solutions to this equation. I know that this idea of having to work through an equation twice in order to find its solution may seem odd, and this is one of the most confusing sections and topics that we cover this year. This may be a good topic to go back and listen to the presentation again after you've taken your notes with a focus on just following along and paying attention to exactly what's going on in the math.